During the perilous Battle of the Atlantic, the Allied forces faced a relentless and cunning enemy. To counter German U-boats, naval aviators relied on a mix of robust aircraft and innovative technology. Among the most effective of these was the Grumman TBF Avenger, a torpedo bomber that evolved into a highly capable submarine hunter. Before the TBF Avenger could attack a U-boat, it first had to find it. This task was made possible by airborne radar, which was a revolutionary technology at the time. Early radar systems were critical for detecting surface submarines, especially in low visibility. The TBF or TBM Avenger was the ideal aircraft to carry these bulky systems as its spacious interior could accommodate the equipment and a dedicated operator. Increasingly reliable airborne radars gave it a significant tactical advantage, as it could track and attack U-boats that were previously undetectable during bad weather or under the cover of darkness. Several radar models were fitted to the Avenger throughout the war, each offering key improvements. The British-developed Air-to-Surface Vessel, or ASV radar, was a series of airborne systems. The early ASV Mark I had a limited range, followed by the improved ASV Mark II, which could detect a submarine from about 4 miles, but had a blind spot at close range. The breakthrough came with the ASV Mark III, which was a centimetric radar, and introduced in 1943. For U-boats equipped with radar warning devices, the ASV Mark III was much harder to detect. It had a range of up to 10 miles and a short minimum range, which significantly minimized the blind spot. The U.S. Navy's ANPS-4 microwave radar was adopted in late 1942, and it was highly effective for detecting U-boats at a range of about 15 miles. The ANPS-20 was an advanced S-band search radar and adopted at the end of the war for the TBM-3W Guppy variant. It could detect a surfaced submarine from over 20 miles away. After locating a submarine, the TBF or TBM Avenger's primary weapon was the depth charge, adapted for aerial delivery. Unlike other single-engine patrol planes, the Avenger's spacious internal bomb bay could carry a heavy load of depth charges. Because a single depth charge rarely guaranteed a kill, multiple aircraft would drop a pattern of several charges to maximize the chance of a lethal hit. The powerful concussive shockwave from an underwater explosion could crush a U-boat's hull or damage its machinery. The standard American aerial depth charge was the 325-pound Mark 17. For surprise attack on surfaced U-boats, a shallow setting of around 25 feet was used to maximize damage before it could submerge. If the U-boat was already underwater, the charges carried by follow-up Avengers were set to detonate at a deeper level usually 50 to 100 feet, to increase the chance of a lethal blast. High-speed, shallow dive attacks required special fusing to prevent the charges from detonating prematurely on the sea surface. Even a near miss could be lethal. These charges had a blast radius of 20 to 30 feet, which was powerful enough to rupture a U-boat's pressure hole. Initially, four charge patterns were common, but by 1944, Avengers often dropped six or more in a fan-shaped spread to blanket the U-boat's probable path. This required a team effort, with a bombardier timing the release while the pilot maintained a low, steady flight. These attacks were psychologically terrifying even for surviving U-boat crews, as the thunderous explosions could shake compartments and cause injuries. In addition to depth charges, another highly effective weapon used against submarines was the Mark 24 Fido Acoustic Homing Torpedo. This passive sonar-guided torpedo was the first Allied weapon of its kind. Lighter than standard torpedoes, at 680 pounds, it was suitable for launch from patrol bombers like the TBF or TBM Avenger. To maintain secrecy, the weapon was disguised as a mine during development, and pilots were ordered to return with it if they couldn't find a target. Unlike depth charges, which relied on proximity blasts, the Fido would listen for the noises of a submerged U-boat's propeller and then passively home in on it. It moved at a relatively slow speed, so it could still be evaded by newer and faster Type 21 U-boats. The torpedo's accuracy meant it didn't need a large explosive charge, and its 92 pounds of torpex were enough for a single lethal hit. Air crews were instructed to launch only one Fido per target to avoid acoustic interference between torpedoes. Once it became known by the Kriegsmarine, U-boat captains resorted to silent running after submerging. They would shut down engines, settle deeper, and wait motionless to avoid detection. Of the 204 Fido torpedoes launched against U-boats during the war, 37 resulted in a sinking, and 18 caused damage, giving it a confirmed sinking accuracy of over 18%,
which was a significant improvement over depth charges. FIDO's success was a key factor in turning the tide of the Battle of the Atlantic and directly influenced the development of post-war anti-submarine torpedoes. In the later stages of the war, the TBF or TBM Avengers armament was enhanced with high-velocity aircraft rockets, or HVARs, beginning in 1944. An Avenger could carry up to eight 5-inch HVARs on underwing rails. Unlike depth charges, which relied on concussive blasts, a direct hit from a rocket could punch a hole through a U-boat's hull or conning tower, disabling and preventing it from submerging. They could be fired from a greater distance, allowing the Avenger to attack from a standoff range and avoid hits from the U-boat's guns. Rockets were also lighter than depth charges and torpedoes, allowing Avengers to conserve fuel during long patrols over the Atlantic where endurance was crucial. By late 1944, the combination of surface search radar and HVARs made the Avenger one of the most dangerous submarine hunters. A notable instance occurred on May 6, 1945, when a TBM Avenger used rockets to sink the German U-boat U-853 off the coast of Rhode Island when the war was about to end. But while effective, rocket accuracy was highly dependent on pilot skill. It required crews to adjust for factors like speed and wind. Avengers often coordinated with destroyer escorts. Rockets could disable a U-boat, and destroyers would finish the kill. Some captured U-boat crews described the psychological impact of rockets as more frightening than depth charges. The Grumman TBF Avengers legacy is its profound impact on modern anti-submarine warfare, a blueprint that continues to shape naval strategy today. Its lasting influence is rooted in the revolutionary weapon systems and technologies it pioneered, many of which have evolved into the core components of modern ASW capabilities. The Avenger's success began with its radar evolution, starting with the early ASV Mark III and ANPS IV systems. These foundational technologies paved the way for modern airborne early warning systems that are crucial for detecting threats. Its use of acoustic torpedoes, like the FIDO, marked a significant step forward, establishing the concept of modern lightweight torpedoes that home in on their targets. The aircraft also deployed air-to-surface weapons, such as HVARs, which were precursors to today's standoff precision weapons. Beyond its armaments, the Avengers airframe itself served as a model for future aircraft platforms. Its continuing role as a successful post-war ASW aircraft directly influenced the development of modern maritime patrol aircraft. Today, the core technologies it introduced, advanced radar, sonoboys, homing torpedoes, and magnetic anomaly detection, remain central to modern anti-submarine warfare. The current continuous improvement of these detection, tracking, and engagement systems is a direct continuation of the technological foundation laid by the TBF and TBM Avenger. Thank you for watching and see you in our next videos.